really tough conditions for the pilots in the respect that a lot of what we're doing is based on timing and feel. And the difference between two, three knots of headwind versus two, three knots of tailwind really can add a great distance to the performance of the airplane. And we see that in longer takeoff rolls, longer landings. We see it in guys landing short. So let's talk about the rules of how National Stole works. Bottom line, we want to see who can take off and land in the shortest combined distance on the same pass. Each competitor gets three different passes to try to score their very best. So they will pull up to this large white line right at show center. They will be cleared for takeoff. They will go full power, roll as minimum distance as they can. Most of them will start to change the configuration of the aircraft by pulling flaps. Rotate. We're going to measure where the main tire last touches the ground. So if they lift off but then they skip back off the ground 100 feet later, we add that extra 100 feet. We will have three to five airplanes in the air or in the pattern at one time, and they will fly a fairly traditional pattern. You'll see it's, it's turning crosswind before the runway's out here and turning base right out here about the highway. They will then come in and start to slow up, maximize the goal is maximize your angle of attack. Increases your, increases your coefficient. The higher the coefficient of lift, the slower an airplane can fly. But the problem is, is when you increase that lift, you increase what we call induced drag. That induced drag means you have to have power to overcome it. So it's a fine line between flying two to three mile an hour above your stall speed to land as short as possible because every extra knot of energy that you have moving forward is more energy that you have to use and absorb through your brakes. So you'll see the pilots trying to land as close to that white line as possible. If they land before it, it's a scratch and that landing and that takeoff score get eliminated. They get three chances. If you land at the 25 foot mark and then you roll another 75 feet, we're going to give you the total measurement of where your mains, so whether it's a nose gear or a tailwheel airplane, it's measured from the main tires and we'll put that score up. Looking across the way over here, we've got our air bosses in the, uh, the tent to the left, retired air traffic controller. Oh, good news, we've been working on a few technical difficulties. We're about three minutes from going live with our feed and getting the contest going, so I hope everybody's excited about that. The gentleman you see across the line, first let's talk about the line right there. You'll see there's a red camera and a laser out there, so we are detecting whether you touch down visually and backing it up electronically. If you touch any part of that line, it is a good landing. If you touch one inch before that line, it is a scratch. The judges down on the far side wearing the safety vest. Those are our competitors as well. Some of the best pilots in the world out there and will be competing in this contest are also judging their brethren out here and sisters. So it's a big team effort. Of course, the important thing to realize is nothing happens in this world without great support. And National Stoll has been relying on aviate. Abby had aircraft. Easy for me to see. Holy smokes, where's my cup of coffee? Huskies wear luxury aircraft and backcountry meat. You'll find Aviat Husky. Many manufacturers have claimed to have a large mission profile, but really, only the Husky delivers. And you're going to see Austin Clemens out here with his really showing what that Husky is capable of. Those big semi Fowler flaps allow for shorter takeoffs and landings to get you in and out of the backcountry in the most efficient way possible. Of course, up here in Minnesota, you guys know all about it, whether it's flying on skis, flying on floats, or flying on wheels. I think you guys spend more time in the hangar changing landing gear out than we do flying in the Pacific Northwest. We'd also like to thank Air Tech Coatings. Remember, Air Tech Coatings will make your paint fly. That high luster in any combination of colors for fabric or metal sets the standard in the industry for paint. American Legend Aircraft is building the most innovative and advanced Cubs today. If there is any notion in your mind that flying these airplanes is a sensation both beautiful and profound, you owe it to yourself to try one on. There's only one true original. Realize your dreams at American Legend Aircraft. I would like to thank Sport Aircraft Seats. That's my Cessna 170 out there. And 
I flew it out from Snohomish, Washington, and let me tell you, having a good, comfortable pair of seats is what it's all about. And sport aircraft seats can get, build you your custom leather or fabric seats with the perfect amount of padding, lumbar support, high and medium density foam. They ship them up out of Alaska, ship them to you, and you install them on your airplane, making quick, affordable changes. Well, now, is everybody over here to my right? You guys ready for some flying and some competition? Yep. All righty. Sounds great. Okay, we are going to be starting off with our heavy touring class. This is Mr. Matt Shantz out of Colorado. This is pretty much a stock Cessna 180. 0470 powered, as many of you know. He's running eight and a half tires, which does have some advantages here in the landing competition. Better braking coefficient, but you got to be a little more finesse on the braking effort. Power's up, tail's flying, a little bit of headwind component. That's a pretty nice takeoff. He was struggling in the preliminary rounds, but that's approximately 200, about 190, 200 feet. Now, right now, here is what we call the heft, that big Her Herford's bull emblem on the back. This kid is out of Ellensburg, Washington. It is Aaron Greer. Ellensburg's a big cow cattle town, hay country out in central Washington State. If you're not familiar, it's actually where I went to college and met my wife. But this is his second competition, his first one down at Yuma, Arizona. He did place third place, so he is looking to move up on the podium here. And he's been flying a nice airplane. Aaron will start with 10 degrees flaps, rotate, drag that tail. That's okay, the tires haven't touched. You notice he pulled the flaps to 30 degrees and got that airplane to pop off the ground. All right, Kenneth Monger, he's working it hard. Oh, it did not touch, it did not. Oh, but it did touch there too early. Okay, this tells me that we've got really squirrely wins because we're getting, we've had three guys now come in here and short final have an issue. Let's see if the Colonel, the Army, can set the ways. Now, normally the Army likes to be on the ground, slogging through the dirt. I've been trying to give him as many Air Force tips from my 20 year career as you can tell the Colonel, but trying to tell an Army Colonel anything is not too easy. He's working it hard. He's working it hard. Keep it going. Keep it going, buddy. You got it. Yes. Put it down. Dump the flaps. Quit flying. Someone shoot that bird. That is correct. At least he did not scratch. Wow. Woo, these four first four are making it exciting here for us. Exciting for sure. You know, since 1981, AirTech Coatings has been revolutionizing the aircraft paint industry. Utilizing their polyurethane technology, AirTech Coatings offered the aircraft owner the advantages of inherent toughness and flexibility, fire resistance, chemical resistance, and the polyurethane wet look in an infinite choice of colors, both sets the standard and the metallic paint world. AirTech Coatings will make your paint fly. Kenneth Monger, uh, you can see all that new aluminum on that airplane. He's working hard to modify that and really show what a simple 172 can do. Feel this wind, folks. We're getting a breeze blowing. We're getting a breeze. Can these guys turn into it? Can they notice it? Turn into the wind and take advantage of it. Dirty Bird's up high with the tail. He'll swing it down, pull the flaps. He is airborne, setting it early and quick. I'm going to call it 125.69. There it is. All right, John. Just getting some good experience. Pretty new pilot with his 170. A student of CC Pocox. Comes out of the very corner of California, Nevada, and Arizona. Calendavar is the place they call it. That's a nice takeoff, buddy. There you go. And what's important when you're doing this, especially as a as a rookie, you're just you're flying against yourself. It's going to school on every pass, trying to improve on every pass, and he did a nice job there improving. 
287 on the takeoff. All right. Ken's not trying to improve. Ken's trying to win. He's tired of finishing second to Jeff Pohl. That takeoff right there is a very good one. But he's got to get one in the books on the landing. The Colonel takes the salute. He's rolling. The line judges are all standing at attention. Looking for a possible early surprise takeoff. Nope, he holds it, gets a good one in the books. He does at around two, I'm gonna call it 280. We'll see what the judges officially relay down to us. 287, 287, good one, Colonel. All right, just back on final. That was so close. He, just aim 10 feet past the line. Take one past the line, get one in the books. Or you can scratch, I don't care. Idle, go to idle, drop it, raise your flaps, dump it. Oh, right on the line. That was a good one, dang it. I mean, yay for my buddy. One eighty six. One eighty six. That's going to uh, knock Colonel Peterson off the top of the board, I think. Moves Je Jeff Pohl and the Dirty Bird up to first at 311 combined score. That's not bad for as much crosswind we have, 30 conditions. John touched down way early in this. Uh, 0300 powered 170. He's running a cruise prop. Sportsman will help it fly slower on landing. Let's see if he can keep it airborne until it gets there. Work it, work it, work it. A little more, a little more power. That's going to be waiting on the judge. I think that one's good. Looks like he got that one good. Oh, we're going to photo on that one. I'm looking at my video feed here. The booth is looking upstairs. We'll let you know when we hear on that or see it. It's a game of feet. Sometimes it's a game of inches. The video was even tough to call. I'm not going to say anything. Here's Kenneth Monger. Keep one on the air. That one was good. That's exactly what he needed to try to take home first place to Arkansas. He's been working so hard at upping his game, practicing, modifying. John Hundred came back with a 223 score. A good landing out of John. That's a great job by the rookie. Oh, it was a scratch for John Hundred. It was a 220. Oh, and Ken Monger. That may not be a counter either. One wheel across, one wheel short, and I don't know which one is going to be the final call. But the Colonel got one down nicely. <laughs> I cannot believe how tight this is getting, folks. And we still have three other airplanes to fly in this category. 291 on the Colonel's landing. Right now, Jeff Pohl is leading at 311. Matt Peterson in at 748 for second. But let's see if the Colonel or John Hundred, he might move up on here as well. We're waiting for our, our graphics with the standings to update. All right, I got the official word that uh, both Joe and Ken were scratches right at the line. So this really means that we just got to, they just need to put one across the line. Maybe raise that approach up a little bit. Oh, look at that windsock across the way. That has swung another 10, 20 degrees. Velocity's picking up. It's a tailwind component out there. Right here at the right here at the line, it's still a little bit 
direct cross. John's got the tail up and flying. There come the flaps. There's the rotation. One little bounce. Airborne. Oh, but he could not keep it in the air. That will not work for him. Okay, Ken. You know, this is an airplane that... The Colonel bought that airplane for about $13,000. Both these airplanes are cheaper than modern cars. Hell, they're cheaper than modern used pickups as well. And it's just amazing what they will, what they will do performance-wise with some skill and practice and lightweight. Ken went for it on that, tried to catch some of that extra wind. I don't think it worked out in his favor. We're going to score Ken Monger at 218. That's really not too bad. The Colonel's on the podium, and he's just one of those guys that comes here for the love and fun of it. He goes, I'm not competitive. Everybody's got better airplanes than me. But it just goes to show, why do we show up and compete? Because you never know what's going to happen. And right now, the Colonel's sitting on the podium in second place. Jeff Pohl's sitting on short final. He's in the lead with Dirty Bird. He struggled yesterday in the preliminaries. He went out and practiced about 20 laps last night. And it was terrible win, terrible air yesterday. He's taking advantage of it today. Let's see if he can keep it in the air all the way to the line for one more. Really getting it slow. Nice, nice, nice. That was good. That was good. I'm almost getting excited for my buddy. Yes. Take that, Austin Clemens. You and your Husky with reversing propeller. Yada, yada, yada. 170 pound punk kid us old fat men are going to get you 176 for jeff pull and the dirty bird for those of you that don't know austin clements is kind of the up-and-coming young star and while he may be a pretty good pilot okay well let's not go that far he's a slightly above average pilot maybe He is a pretty nice, respectful kid. Of course, he just keeps saying, well, my parents always taught me to be respectful to my elders, and you guys are all so old. Good one there by John. There's the rookie bringing one in. 300 feet even. Okay, come on, Ken. Bring it in a little steeper this time. Carry it through. Carry it through. Because this wind right here is ugly. Look at these airplanes dancing. Up, down, left, right. Nose yawn. There he's got it stable. Take it. There you go, buddy. That's what you want. That's what you want. Good one. Uh, let's see if he's going to get out of the way for the colonel. Or the colonel's going to take it around. Looks like he's going to make it. Oh. Ah, tough one there. Tough one for the Colonel. All righty. Woo. So summarizing after our first three rounds in the light tour and for our first four competitors, we've got Jeff Pohl leading at 311. Kenneth Monger at 458, Matt Peterson at 578, and then John Hunrod at 679. All right, we're going to go to commercial, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to take the tuxedo tails off. It is time for me to switch gears, and I've got to head over, get into the airplane mode, and see if I can hang with these boys and maybe work my way up to the podium.
Hey, I'm Chad and I am legend. So once I decided I wanted to buy a bush plane, a Super Cub, before I began my research, I had never even heard of legend aircraft. I had heard of a couple different manufacturers and that's really what I started with when I started researching. It was only through doing different Google searches and, and getting on the forums and, and hearing about this legend brand that uh, I began I to really research them. And, and what I know today is uh, Legend Aircraft is the best kept secret in aviation. Uh, it doesn't appear to me that they spend uh, their money on uh, a lot of marketing and advertising. Um, they spend that money on uh, research and development and, and into building a great product. Another factor for me, uh, aside from the build quality differences, the, the willingness to customize, uh, the customer service, their, their willingness to sit down and almost do a, kind of a, 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 a ground up one-off creation. On top of that was the other manufacturer that I was looking at. If I were to spec out this plane as close as they could get, I was getting less value, a, a less rugged, less sturdy, not as well built airplane, and an airplane that ultimately at the end of the day was not exactly what I wanted. That plane specced out at about $100,000 more than the Legend Aircraft version. And what I ended up with here with the AmeriCub was exactly what I wanted out of a Bush plane and out of a Super Cub. And, and Legend Aircraft was willing to, to build that for me. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Pohl here. I'm the pilot of the Dirty Bird. You're looking across the runway at there. Boy, it is challenging out there. Up next, we've got Micah Lindstrom. He's got basically the same airplane as me, a little bit different propeller. He's quite a bit lighter, younger, probably more agile. So watch this guy. It's going to be a tight race. Micah just finished building that, uh, that Super 170, I don't know, probably about six months ago. He's a hometown kid. Uh, lives just down the road from me in Malacca. Uh, put the Lycoming 0360, 180, uh, 180 horse on there, and swinging an MT constant speed propeller. Now, I want you guys to all root him on, even though I'm probably your favorite. He actually, he's the, the kid practices, he flies a lot. That's why he's probably going to whoop me today. You guys watch these winds. You watch that wind sock, and he keeps switching from a quartering head to a quartering tail when it makes it really challenging. When you're coming in on short final, you got the wind gusting and rolling over the top of the pine trees behind you. Makes it a handful. If you watch when they're coming in, they're kind of dancing side to side and crabbing into the wind. It's a handful. Look at that tail high method. I'd like to say I taught them that. Nice job, Micah. Up next, Nathaniel Kick, Princeton, Minnesota, another local guy. That airplane actually sold to him, I don't know, probably about three years ago, and he flies the heck out of it. Nathan is a commercial airline pilot as well, just getting back into GA. And he's got the stock 0300 engine on there. Uh, makes it a little bit more difficult. You'll see it won't be quite the takeoff of the Super 170s, but he handles it really well. Let's see if he can nail his takeoff. Oh, rotated just a little too soon. If you rotate too soon, it'll cost you, and it can cost you 100 feet. And John Jughead Council, your MC, that I cannot wait to come back over here and talk in the mic so I don't have to. This is not my job. I'm filling in. Hopefully doing an all right job for you folks. John flew in all the way from, uh, what is it, uh, Washington. Flew in from Washington to MC for you folks today. A little bit early on the rotation for Jughead as well. Jughead is another commercial pilot. He flies for Alaskan Airlines. So Micah, the first guy to take off there was a 177 foot takeoff.
Here comes Michael Lindstrom on short final. Let's see if he can bring it across the line. It is a handful out there. Keep it going, Mike. You're doing a good job. Oh. And he did it. Nice job, Micah. Oh, this is going to be close. <laughs> Here comes Nathaniel Kick. Micah had a 166-foot landing. I think I might be out of the race, folks. Here comes Nate Kick across the line. Nice job, Nate. See how that crosswind got him there? Coming hot on his tail. Short foul right now is the RMC John Jughead Council. That was a 303-foot landing for Nathaniel Kick. And, oh, Jughead didn't get it across the line. Doggone it, Jughead. So, Jeff, while the planes are coming back, we've got a minute. How would you describe that air that we just flew in right there? Terrible. It was I, terrible. It's fine if you just want to, you know. My mic's on. Yeah. So it, it was pretty terrible. Yeah, if you're just coming, you know, if you're just going cross country, it's it's not a big deal. But if uh, if you're trying to do a competition, it, it makes it awfully tricky. So so the airspeed between stalling and the airspeed between having a, a good established a good established approach is only a couple of knots. And when you're guster more than those knots, you could stop flying at any minute. Oh yeah, you can drop off. I mean, you're sitting there on short final thinking you got the perfect approach and there goes Mike. gone. There goes Mike again, tail high. Oh, uh, rotated a little one. too soon. I don't think you can hear Matthew. It's okay. And here goes Nate. And another slightly early rotation bid. He did recover. It's really tricky out here, too. When you're taking off in these competitions, it's minimal controllable airspeed. So when you rotate and you're basically just wallowing in that ground effect, it's really easy to get blown off course. It takes a lot of concentration to get it done and get it done without breaking anything. So that was a 329-foot takeoff for Nathaniel. Or here comes Jughead, yep. Sorry, folks, I got people talking in my ear, and it, it's messing me up. It's not my job. It's Jughead's job. That's why I want him to come back ASAP. Watch him work that crosswind. One wheel came off. The other one stayed in the dirt. It is tricky out there. Here comes Micah for his second landing. His last one was 166 feet. Let's see if he can beat that. I have a feeling this kid is going to knock me right off the leaderboard. Work it, Micah. Oh, landed a little bit long on that one. That's going to cost him. Waiting for the footage on Micah there. One, 189 feet on Micah. Come on, Nathaniel. Oh, scratch. Doggone it. Right now, Micah is holding second place at 343 feet. Uh, Kenny Munger is third at 458 and matthew peterson fourth place at 578 
It's not over yet, though, folks. Here comes Jughead. These winds are really kicking up. Go around. Good job. Good choice, Jughead. Folks, there's nothing wrong with doing a doing a go around. It's nothing to be nothing to be ashamed of. When the weather is not in your favor, something's going to go wrong. It's a lot better decision to do that go around than take the chance of uh, of wrecking an airplane or or hurting someone or yourself. So Jughead, being the professional proficient pilot that he is, made the choice to do a go around. So we just get to watch him land. Well, I think that was like four landings he just did, and uh, hopefully he'll just do it in one this time. Well, you can feel that. That wind has picked up, I bet, another six knots from just a couple of minutes ago. And it's turning into a, a quartering tailwind, which makes it incredibly difficult. Here he comes. Now, guys, remember... Jughead coming in here. This is uh, the guy that flew in all the way from Washington so he could talk to you guys on the radio and explain all these airplanes to you and how Stoll works and everything else. So make sure you guys give him a huge round of applause. Cross the line. He'll take it. Well, I can tell you, leading uh, leading the light touring class right now is a pretty good feeling, but I know yesterday in the quarterfinals, this guy right here in that polished 170, he was holding first. He knocked me out, which, uh, which is a little bit of a gut punch, but you know what? When you get a young guy that's as, as active and interested in aviation as Micah, um, to see someone like that take the lead, it's, it's actually a good feeling. You know, you're... you're uh, you, you pass the torch at some point. I mean, you can't you can't win them all, and you can't win them forever. But gosh darn it, we can all try. Mike is taking the line here for his third and final run. This is the guy that's really got me shaking in my boots. And here he goes. Let's see what he does. Hopefully he doesn't rotate too soon. Oh, he came back in the dirt again. Doggone it. And Nathaniel Kick in that beautiful blue and white Cessna 170. Boy, I tell you folks, the wind, the way it's switching in that tailwind, if you watch that windsock cross the way, it is so challenging, especially these guys with the uh, the underpowered 170s, these, these stock six-cylinder Continental 0300 engines that, that they produce 145 horsepower at 2700 rpm the problem is with these fixed pitch propellers on these these stock engines you can't get 2700 rpm so these guys are actually taking off with only about a hundred horsepower and that's a four place airplane that is is not an easy task to accomplish so these guys might have longer takeoffs but i tell you what it is impressive what they're able to do come on jughead There goes the flaps and rotate to get it clean. You can see how challenging it is with that, that underpowered engine. Um, once you get that thing off the ground and being able to control it, power does a lot uh, to help a pilot. So an underpowered airplane is a great trainer because it teaches you really how to fly the airplane. Looks like a 311 foot takeoff for Jughead there. Here comes Micah Lindstrom. On short final, uh, he is currently in second place. Let's see what this landing does for him. Oh, and it's a scratch. Well, I'll tell you what, Micah flew the heck out of that airplane. I don't. I think he's, I don't have any papers here. I think he's like 22 years old, got into aviation, and he has pretty much devoted his every spare moment to it. Come on, Nate. Long, but you know, that is a good, solid landing. 
See if we can get some scores on Nate Kicks landing there. Boy, I can't wait for Jughead to get back over here. He's on short final right now, and I cannot tell you how bad I want him sitting back in this chair. 271 feet for Nate Kick, and here comes your MC, John Jughead Council. Fighting that win, working that engine with his underpowered, and he's across. You know, landing 20, 30 feet long is a whole lot better than landing one inch short. I can tell you from experience. Yesterday I had uh, about a 12 inch scratch, and today I had a one wheel behind the line scratch, so that's when you know you are close. While uh, Jughead parks his airplane and hopefully runs his butt back over here really, really fast. I think we're going to be running. All right, right now, folks, uh, myself, Jeff Pohl in the Dirty Bird, home first place, 311 feet. Micah Lindstrom in second place at 343 feet. Kenny Munger in third place, 458 feet. And I think we've got a commercial break coming up here, guys, while they line up the next class. When it's time to recover and paint your fabric-covered aircraft, look no further than AirTech Coatings. Since 1982, our FAA-approved system provides you with a shiny, durable, easy-to-apply product. The AirTech system has fewer steps than any other product on the market today, saving you both time and money. While using cutting-edge technology, we offer a wide range of products, whether it's for work, play, antique or aerobatic we have you covered remember we make paint fly my name is mary alverson and i own wings over water seaplane training i operate out of madden's resort up here in brainerd minnesota and we have two airplanes we have a, a cessna 172 on amphibs and a super cub on straight floats the super cub is is kept here on Madden's property, so in the morning, if you get your rating here in the morning after breakfast, you have breakfast and hop in the airplane and we go fly, you don't even leave the resort. Madden's is owned and operated by a seaplane family and you will have the experience of a lifetime here. If you're from out of town or out of state, this is the perfect place to get your seaplane rating. You're staying at the finest resort in Minnesota and that in itself is a, a, an experience. And then you get your seat playing right on top of it. What could be better? Dude, I was...
Comes the Air Force. Oh, that was tough. So, t on those last two passes of mine, you know, below 30 feet, there was probably four times I was full-scale deflection on the controls. That is some dirty air right here on short final. And uh, kudos to the guys and gals that have been putting them down because I sure didn't today. I didn't today. Good thing is that sport aircraft seat cushion comes out just as easy as it goes in. <laughs> Woo! So coming up next, we've got our young little superstar, Austin Clemens. Check out that beautiful Husky. And those that are familiar with the Aviat Husky lineup, yeah, he's a local boy. Grandma and Grandpa live right here in town. He's had an absolute blast this week spending some quality time with family. You know, Husky has that cool dog on the back of their, uh, on their emblem. It usually flies on the tail. And when you look at Austin's Husky, that dog has a little more attitude than normal. And uh, I think you're going to see why that, that decal is quite appropriate for not only the airplane that Husky brings to this contest, but the way Austin flies it. The good news is, after that last pass of mine, I think I can log off my go-arounds, my uh, stall recoveries, because there's about two or three of those coming down final. Woo! All right, this is our Bush class. Austin Clemens and Alan Gates. And I know I screwed up the pronunciation on that one. There goes Austin. That thing is roaring at over 200 horsepower. Rips it airborne. Oh, longer than a little expected. What's it going to come in at? Somewhere down around the 190 foot mark. 192. Alan Goddess. That's what this is. Out of Montevito, Minnesota. He was actually supposed to be up north with uh, up at one of their other places. And I think with the weather and different airplanes, he decided just to come down and hang out with us and play stool all weekend. We sure are glad he did. And his son's down here. Husky A1B 0360 powered. He has competed at Sodbuster two years ago. Otherwise, this is his second stole competition. Went to school on Austin, who had a little trouble getting off the ground. He waited just a little bit here, made a nice uh, conservative takeoff. I think he'll like that. Two, four, two, two, three on that. Big thanks to uh, Acme Arrow out there. You've seen the uh, suspension systems getting used here today, and that is for sure. I'm just glad I didn't have to use that Lad Gardner insurance to uh, <laughs> recover after my airplane flying today. Now watch Austin, short final. He's going to make sure he gets one past the line. He does it. Oh, what is that? You ladies and gentlemen, that is the MT propeller that you can get in reverse 162 feet go talk to the men and women at mcfarlane aviation they can get you hooked up with that reversing propeller as well now that was just plain good smart comp competition mindset on austin's part he knows he needed one of the book he took it long he knew it was long that's okay and he's got a counter Alan, where'd you go? There he is, coming around the corner, Mr. Goddess. Definitely a tailwind component right here at the line. A lot of crosswind, but it's unsteady. That is definitely the trend right now, is it is variable everywhere you are. Up at two, 300 feet in the pattern, it's probably blowing 20 mile an hour. He's working it hard. Nice one, Alan. Now can he get it stopped? That's not going to be that far off from... Uh, I like it. I like it. Now, 
So Austin started flying uh, when he was 12 years old in a Super Cub. He's, I think he's all the way up to 18 or 19 now. He's almost out of his teens, you know. Woo. It's, uh, we all put together some money, and we bought him his first Razor back at the last stole contest. And I'm not sure he, he uses it yet, but. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Yep. Amazing thing about that kid is all the different airplanes that he's flown from Barons, Bonanzas, Stearmans. I hear he's got probably one of the highest time Stearman young kids out there and a great Stearman uh, instructor. Over 1,300 hours he's working on that commercial and instrument and his multi-engine ratings when he's not practicing in this Husky and he practices a lot and it shows. Lives down in Benton, Kansas on the Stearman field with his family. He calls this Husky the dog. That's a nice takeoff, and I think this dog's doing a little dirty bird hunting this weekend. Where's Jeff Pohl? Is he around here anywhere? Is he hiding? I think he's looking to go get that dirty bird, chase it down. All righty, 191 on that takeoff. Allen's got a good one in the books now. Let's see if he can go improve upon it. Oh, nice takeoff. Good one, buddy. Two nineteen, two nineteen. You know, I think after uh, tomorrow, we kind of got some time off here. I think it's time to head back out to Madden's Resort on Gold Lake and maybe take in a game of golf or uh, enjoy some more great meals, beverages. It was sure a great time out there. All right, Austin's bringing it in. Cut the corner here. Gonna just like this final air is terrible. So let's just shorten it up. It's looking stable for him there. He is dancing. He's working it, working it. Look at that tail. Look at that rudder. It's almost all rudder for him. Very little later on use. Great effort. Oh, my gosh. Even in these conditions. Nails it. Excellent. Excellent job. Now, that's just playing show. And, uh, and now you're going to blow the dirt over on the dirty bird? Oh. He is. Uh, he is. He's cruising for bruising as that kid. 150 right there and hey we got a special guest right here at the uh at the podium with me this is none other than mr colin keneve he's got his carbon cub in town but i think most people probably know you colin better flying the old green plane your dad's 182 welcome to uh brainerd oh, thanks, thanks. I don't know. thanks thanks jughead i'm glad to be here this is amazing i heard all these accolades about austin but one thing you didn't you forgot to say is that's just one stellar human being he is a good kid, but we're not going to let that go to his head. He's, his flying is, is good enough. Well, the good news is, is he can't hear us. Oh, well, that's true. That's true. So we can't admit that he's a really nice human being. Alan coming in, going to try to hang with him. This is looking good. Nice. Get on those brakes. Get them. Get them. Get the flaps up. There you go. Well, the good news is I think, uh, you know, we, we've seen great competition He's, uh, he's won a lot of, of pretty much everything he's entered. He hasn't always been in first place, but he's been on the podium. And uh, he's got a little stole drag racing experience now. And so as he continues to grow, 341 right now is the best for Austin. And Gade's in at 5. Got us, I'm sorry, in at 509. So. I don't think this microphone is working, or is it? Yeah, that's. You no, know, you're good. You're good. Hopefully, Colin, you didn't see me fly. Man, I always see you fly. I always watch you fly. Jughead, I'm your uh, biggest fan outside of Dakota. <laughs> I, I might have embarrassed my dog today. That was how bad that was. He's like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll walk home from the from the sandbar. Yeah, but it, it, as hard as it, people don't realize, as hard as these pilots are working, they're still having a ball, and that's what counts. Well, that must have been what I did wrong today. I wasn't having any fun. You're not having any fun. You I sound like you're having, having a ball. I wasn't having fun out there today. That was 
That was work, and it didn't go my way. All right, let's make some noise for Austin. Local boy. Local boy. Let's see if we can make more noise than this dog. Let her rip, Austin. Another impressive plane, this this uh, Husky. I tell you what, Allen is just, he's manhandling that plane today. And in, in these wins, this isn't easy. Well, and, and the thing is, Allen's just one of these typical seaplane pilots around here. He doesn't spend time practicing. He's just relying on the skills he uses every day in his off-airport flying around here to uh, to do it. And just kind of showing what, what the average guy out there and, and a great Husky can do. Because remember, luxury aircraft and backcountry meet when you find yourself in an Aviat Husky. Many manufacturers have claimed to have that large mission profile, but we're seeing it right here. I saw everything they packed out of the airplane when they arrived, and they've they've got everything loaded in, all the comforts to be on the road, and then lighten it up and just come out here. Hey, Jeff, I don't know if you noticed, but that dog was kind of blowing dust and smoke over at your Dirty Bird airplane. And he's about to get it. He's a, what do you mean he's about to get it? You're going to have a grudge match. Wait a minute. A grudge match? This kid right here. Yeah, that kid right there that's hanging it and landing it right past the line and going into reverse. Oh, he didn't even go into reverse on that one. I think that landing was still shorter than yours, and he didn't go in reverse. I, I think he's going to need that beta when we go out here and have our head-to-head -head grudge match. He's going to need beta to beat the dirty bird is what I'm hearing. But you know what he doesn't need is, a, is he doesn't even need a tug for that thing. He just lands that thing in his hangar, I think. Or just backs it in. Just Eddie could blow the dust out of it, clean it all at once. No matter what happens, look at the difference. There's a four play Cessna 170 against uh, we know Husky. Yeah, we're not going to talk about that, though. We're going to talk about these guys landing under 300 feet. Yeah, these yeah. These guys are putting this thing down in less than a football field. Further, oh. That's further than I can run. <laughs> so as Allen's bringing it into final here, we uh, he's still just kind of flying for pride and, and outdoing himself right here. When these pilots taxi by, you guys give them all the applause, raise your hands, wave at them. We're having a ball out here. Come on, Alan. Looks like that air's gotten a little bit better. Oh, nice. Oh, there's a – see, that's what I was noticing, too, is right about 10 feet before the line, you get a little float. You get a – I think there's a little pocket of air. I don't know. Maybe it's it's Papa Joe's over there. All the people with their, uh, their dinner getting their hamburgers over there at Papa Joe's is interrupting the airflow. Did you get a cheeseburger yesterday? I tell you what, those things are. Jay hit the spot. Three seventy four on the landing for Allen. All righty. So, Jughead, where's your next, uh, you and Dakota's next venture going to, where are we going to find you guys? Oh, well, let's see. You could be out on the sandbar on the Skycombs River real soon. Of course, hunting season's firing up. And uh, and if you never, you know, go to the YouTube page, Jughead Council, and you can see all the adventures for Dakota and I as we explore the Pacific Northwest, play on the sandbars, go quail hunting, pheasant hunting, mountain biking, camping. I tell you what, I have my YouTube alert set to when you post a video because I can't. I just love living vicariously through you and that beautiful black lab of yours. Nice job, Alan. So, well, there's nothing better than flying unless you get a fly with your best friend. Here comes our line judges back over. They definitely gonna need to go to Papa Joe's and get some meals because I made them run it all off out there. So, what I see is is Jeff pulls over there putting some racing fuel in the uh, in the Dirty Bird. Austin's sitting over here. And, uh, you know, I, I think these guys are kind of going to go at each other. If I, if I heard right, I heard talk about a grudge match and the bonus capabilities of that four-seat Cessna 170 versus that fancy dog over there. Let's, uh, let's, Austin, is he climbing out? Is he coming over here? 
They they say rubbing is racing, but you don't want to be rubbing in airplanes. So I, the way they rub is oh, by giving. Oh, look at the punk kid's taking off his sweatshirt to get even lighter, showing his six pack abs over there. Because I guarantee Jeff Pohl doesn't have six pack abs over there that he's dealing with. We do get that calendar out. I think Austin's going to be Mr. July. Oh, Austin, look at that. So so this is really a Minnesota battle because we got, we got the local kid. He lives in Kansas, but his grandparents live right here. And Jeff's from Malacca, which isn't very far away, but, you know, more than two canoe strokes away, that might be, uh, that might be far enough. Well, yeah, he's, he's, I would call him local. His mom was uh, born and raised in, in Brainerd. His grandparents still live here. So this is kind of coming home. This will be interesting to see. This is a great chance, too, folks. If you haven't had lunch, we're, we're technically going on to our lunch break right here. And uh, that will be about 30 minutes. But, uh, but I think these two are going to have a little fun, a little, uh, a little just jaunt. Yeah. The, hey, Austin, uh, you can high-five and hug afterwards. But right now you got to keep that game face on. Dial up your phone, Colin. I'm going to go out there and see what they're doing. I'm going to call you so I can talk to you and you can pass it on. Sounds good. How about it? Has Jughead been keeping everybody entertained today? I mean, he, the man puts his best clothes on to come out and do this, so he clearly is a labor of love for him. Let's see if I can get him on speakerphone here. I don't know if you guys will be able to hear this through this or not. Austin, because he's been talking smack on you, Pop. I see you getting all light. You got this skinny stuff, do you? You got to show it to the old man? Yep, Jeff's been talking smack so much that we got to lay it down now. Are you going to use reverse or are you going to do it like the man? I got to do it like a man. That's what I promised Jeff, so. Hey, good luck. Uh, about 30% of the crowd's rooting for you. The other 70%'s rooting for you as well, I think. Okay, That's good. 100% if you're not sure about this new modern map. Wow. Jughead's going to make his way over to Jeff here. and Jeff's a lover, not a fighter, so he's probably going to say all things good. But they are definitely at each other. So, bad, buddy. They're just they're laughing at the old man. Everybody's rooting for the kid. You're in his neighborhood. Do you think you have any chance at all? I'm going to spank that house. They're rooting for you. I'm a Minnesota boy. What's going on with that? Hey, this is a four-place airplane. This is a four-place Cessna. Well, maybe we should have had the uh, the competition carrying all your camping gear, too. So good luck to you guys. Colin, I think we're going to be in for a good little show here. Oh, I can't wait. And he's right. He's, he's flying a four-place Cessna, and he can load that thing down and go about anywhere you want. Uh, special thanks to Textron Cessna for showing up with that brand-new shiny 206. The uh, cargo pad, uh, pod alone under there carries 300 pounds you guys get a chance after this show, walk down and check that beautiful blue and white and silver bird out. Here we go, Austin. Oh, he's working it. He's working it. Right now, you know their hearts are just going a million miles an hour. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. This is it. Look at it. Jeff's over there banging for support. Come on, let's make support. some noise for these guys. Let's do this thing. Come on, Jeff. Nineteen fifty-five versus two thousand and twenty technology capabilities. Young and old. We've got everything going on on the line right now. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. Wow, it's it's tight. It's it, tight. It's, it's really all on the tight. landing. Are we giving them three runs? I don't know how many runs they're going to go, but you heard it. I think you heard it. Austin says he's not going to use beta. He says he's going to do it old man style. Uh huh. Old man style. Let's see. Let's see here. Here he comes, slipping around that corner. Look at the crab. Look at the wind. 
Oh, look at this tailwind component out at far center. It's squirrely right here at the line. Half the lines of flags are showing crosswind, some tail, some headwind. That young man oh! is rocking right now. Gives up 20 feet at the line. He did not use reverse. He did not. Oh, that's somewhere out about 180 feet. Jughead, I tell you what, from all the way over here, you called it right on the knot. It was 180. If only I flew as well as I see things. Okay, come on, Jeff. I got a root for Jeff. He's my buddy. He's closer to my age. What are you now, 36? Exactly. I'm 36. 36, 36. Come on, Jeff. I love his airplane. That's it. Yeah! That was good. Get on it, buddy. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. 179 and a quarter. One nine two, Austin by twelve oh. feet. Pop. Wow! They're oh, they're going again. They're going around. Here we go. Well, it's got to be like hockey. We got to go at least best out of three, if not best out of seven series at this point. Oh man, I I don't know about you, but even my heart's beating for these guys. Oh, Austin oh. Saw smile says it all. He says it all. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. You no. got it. Here's what's going to go on. Here's what's going on. Oh, you're not going to pull out their girlfriends. These lovely ladies are walking out. They're going to cheer on their men. Jughead, that's darn near a distraction, my friend. When Jughead flew fighter planes, that's how he got his name, Jughead. But now we're going to call him Mr. Steal Your Girl. We have 193 for Austin. One hundred and thirty-four feet. One hundred and thirty-four feet in that big bird. He better change the name of that to Angry Bird. They're, st they're still trash talking on the radio, I hear. I wish I could hear them. Here he comes, skidding around that corner, puts it into a nice slip. Oh, man. Oh, Austin, I feel terrible for your girlfriend, man. Hey, hey, hey. Well, we're live in the cockpit listening to these guys trash talk as well. we got both their girlfriends out here. Oh, oh, he, he gets it there. He gets it. we got Brianna and Tori. That's pretty good. Two zero zero right on the knot. So so the word is is either the air boss out there or I don't know. Personally I think the guy in the tuxedo should get uh, should get the girls at the end of this, regardless of which of the uh, which of the pilots wins the contest. We'll totally distract him. Come on, buddy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, pretty good landing. Pretty good landing. Pretty good one. That was tight. Well, I hope I got you, Austin. That was so close. How close was it? I don't know. 209 feet for Mr. Jeff Pohl. 209 for Jeff. But it's a combined score here. Well, 
You guys want to see one more round out of them, or you want to call it here? One more? The crowd one, wants one, one more. more. One the more. crowd wants one more. And I tell you what, you're not going to have to talk very hard to get Austin and Jeff what? to keep flying. These two outwork everybody. They just keep on flying all day long. I don't know. Maybe they should sh flip it around and have Dirty Bird go first. Oh, that'd be another level of pressure. Oh, man, this is, isn't this fun? Oh, this, this is, this is what aviation's about. I tell you what, Brainerd, Minnesota rolled out the red carpet. Now, where's that airplane going? Why would he be leaving now? He wants to see this contest from the air. Come on, Austin, work that plane. Oh, it didn't happen. Uh -huh. That that dog didn't hunt. No, it's, I tell you what, but did you see the uh, how synchronized he was? Dropping that, raising that tail, grabbing those flaps, getting that thing in the ground, getting that thing in the air. Yeah, they're working, man. They are. He's going for it all. Good takeoff. That was a good takeoff. Blew the Colonel's hat off. 179. That was good. That was good. Brianna, Tori, come here. Let's get your input on this. No, what do you mean you have no comment, says Tori? What about Brianna? How about you? Since when do women have nothing to say when it comes to their men and airplanes? Well, I think if you looked at their Instagram stories, it tell a different story. Oh, does it? They don't want to say it out loud, but they're posting it on socials. My man's the best. I see. Here we go, Austin. I see. Here we go. He's fighting that wind. Look at that tail. He's working that rudder like crazy. Oh! Short, short, short. Wow. All right. Don't tell Jeff. Nobody tell Jeff on the radio what just happened. Hey, Jeff, I promised everybody I wouldn't tell you that uh, Austin just scratched. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. I like that answer. Who said that? Brianna was, like, really disappointed that you scratched, too. That was a bad scratch. Oh, Whoa. that was a great landing. Stop it, buddy. Stop it. I think that's got to be a 170 win right there. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. That landing was 232 feet long. So what we need to get, Colin, is, is we need to find out exactly what the score was. Oh, this might uh -oh. come down to the crowd. This, this might come down to the crowd and the numbers. Here's what happened. Since nobody, since this is unofficial, they weren't tracked in the computer or logged in the computer. Nobody took notes, so we're going to take a crowd vote. As soon as Austin gets uh, climbed out of his cockpit here. First off, let's, let's show these guys some appreciation for how hard they're working out here. Two of the finest aviators in backcountry and stole flying right there. And there he goes, folks. Mr. Steal Your Girl.
Okay, I know I talked in front of a lot of people, but some of you may not be able to heard. So we're, we're on our lunch break here, and then we come back for our experimental bush, and then we have our light sport, light experimental. So we've got lots of flying left to go here. We've got uh, three more sets of heats, and, of course, our superstars are coming down the line. So hope everybody's having a great time, and uh, we'll see you all in a little bit later. This online had a fun time and is ready for the next two rounds. We've got our alternate bush and then our light sport, light experimental coming out, and this is going to be some good close competition. We've got some carbon cubs, some mother of all cubs from Legend Cub out here, and uh, cub crafters. And of course, then we go into our super, super uh, modified, you know, Yeehaw 6, Jason Busatz, Rans Coyote 2, Yamaha powered engines really fun time we've had a great crowd out here today and everyone's enjoyed getting to meet the pilots signing autographs with the kids fun time with jeff pole and austin clemens having their little grudge match the judges are headed back across the line the wind has not changed the weather has not changed it is the same challenging conditions that we have had all day And as we see our next next round of competitors starting to come out, we sure want to thank Airtech Coatings, American Legend Aircraft, Lad Gardner Aviation, Madden Resorts, Acme Aero, and Rugged Radios out here. Rugged Radios is what all of our judges, our safety observers, our line judges, our ops people, our air traffic control rely on to uh, communicate and, and execute these great events with National Stoll. So thank you to Rugged Radios. It's been tough, challenging flying today. And uh, you always want to know when you've got somebody that has your back in these tough, challenging times. If you're looking for aviation insurance, then you should look no further than Lad Gardner Aviation Insurance. With an extensive team of professional aviators, they will give you the attention you deserve, building not only a relationship with your agent that you can trust, but one that also has a work ethic that is second to none. Be protected. Be with Lad Gardner Aviation Insurance. Coming up next, we're going to start off with Brian Steck. He's got a beautiful 2020 legend, Maoak, mother of all cubs out here. Boys up from Texas. He's going to be competing against a highly modified Cessna 170 that's in the experimental category now, being flown by none other than C.C. Pocock from Calivari. And then Corey Robin, one of the favorites. Everybody online, of course, knows Corey and Ghost, his beautiful carbon cub. Stole Drake champion 2018. Pops Door, he's got Coyote Ugly out there. Highly modified experimental PA-18 Super Cub. So it is about time to get everything going here. Oh, I cannot wait. This is going to be a good one. Titan 370 is what's powering this Moac. Big extended gear, of course running Alaska bush wheels, running the Alaska baby bush wheel. And more importantly, he's got that Acme shock underneath the tail, helping absorb the suspension. He's up, he's flying, Acme arrow takes the bounce of the tail airborne out there at about 122 feet. The dust is still flying up after every single takeoff. These judges, who are also the competitive pilots on the downwind side of this runway, they are taking a beating today. The judge lines up the main gear on CC. He's going to point it just a bit into the wind using a 100-horsepower shot of nitrous. Let's see what he gets. Oh, he's not going to like that. A little tougher airborne at about. 119 was the first CC is going to get airborne somewhere in the 168 foot range. Plug your ears. The bull prop being turned by this uh, 370 Titan motor on Ghost as well is a loud one. Big supporter by Acme here. Skid in the tires. Oh, good one, good one. He pulled it, and it stayed on the ground for about 10 feet. 
and then Ghost was airborne, and she is going skyward. Big thanks to Tannis, of course, up here at 151 feet for the Ghost and Corey Robbins. Up here in Minnesota, you guys know how cold the in winters are, and you don't want to be starting that cold engine. You can rely on your Tannis preheaters. They have the oil, have the cylinders, have the blocks, everything warmed up, ensuring long life of that engine. Oh, my gosh. Pop's door is showing why he is the absolute master. He just, that was the smoothest takeoff. There was no violent rotation. There was no slam in the tail wheel. It just gently lifted off and floated off the ground at 103 feet. One of our new rookies out here as well, Colin Caneva. We know him with the old green plane out of Lincoln, Nebraska. Silverhawk Aviation, here we go. Oh, yeah, the light sport cub. That's going to be a good takeoff in the 118, 119 range. Woo, look at that. 119, 168, 151, 103, and 119 to start the competition here with the experimental bush. Now, first one's back in, the Moak. Here we go. See if the wind's gotten any better for Brian Steck and the boys in this round or not. It doesn't look like it. These airplanes are lighter. They're going to be affected by the wind more. He had to throw a big burst of power in at the last minute to save it, and that put about an extra 60, 70 feet on his roll. He's down there, it looks like, at about the 258 mark, approximately. Fat Tire Cowboys, of course, not only nothing better than a Keystone Friday update. 250 on the landing, 250 on the landing for Brian Steck. But big thanks to Fat Tire Cowboys for supporting the National Stole Series as well. Here comes CC Pocock, leading edge slats. Big modified airframe, nice, touches down at about 20 feet. I think he's going to be happy with this one. Definitely have one in the books, which is what he needs because his preliminary rounds didn't go that well yesterday. What's the judges say for CC? He's got that 170 stopped in 160 feet. If he can get a little closer to the line on his next chances where he can be more aggressive, I think he's going to really come up with a good score. Ghost floating it in. Very good. Nice, smooth. Touchdown. Good conservative landing for the first one. The tally score for Ghost and Corey Robin on the first pass is 200 feet. 200 feet. So typically in this category or this bracket of competition class, we'll see guys operating in about 200, 250 feet combined takeoff and landings. Today's wind conditions are seeing numbers a lot higher, over 300. Pops Dory throwing some power in it, trying to save it, and he does not do it. It got closer to the line, but it was still about three feet short or about one diameter on those 35-inch Alaska bush wheels. Okay, Colin, the rookie. Just fly it smooth, fly it conservative, just like you're out on the sandbars having a good time, dumping the flaps, good, right on the line. Good effort, good effort. Man, the rookies are just going to school this weekend. And they're like, hey, we want to take home some of these medals from the, uh, from the veterans. One eighty-one. I think that's going to find Keneva and his Carbon Cub moving up onto the top three. Let's see. Oh, landing four or five feet past the line. You saw him dump the flaps. The airplane quit flying, which is exactly how you want it to be. That was a nice job. Of course, CC's Bush Air Schoolhouse, great place in Cala Navarra to go and learn how to fly uh, Max Perform Beer Airplane, get tailwheel transition, off airport training. Grip Lock Ties and Acme Aero, big sponsors here for Corey Robin and the Ghost. One of the original Flying Cowboys out of Utah, having a good time on his mid US tour. This next gentleman, the beautiful Coyote Ugly, used to live and spend his time in 
I'm sorry, Nevada. Yeah, that other desert state. Now he splits it between his grandkids in Boise, Nampa, Idaho area, and Arizona. Such a friendly gentleman. Colin Keneva, Lincoln, Nebraska. Again, one of the rookies in the class. He's on the airplane about a year, flown about 200 hours. That was a good score. Really good score. All right, Brian's out for his second run. Round two of the experimental bush. I think he'll like that takeoff. 159 is what it comes in at. There you go. That's the takeoff CC was looking for. Right down in about the 120 foot range. 170. Yeah, 117, 117. Good deal. Corey's getting the line judges pumped up, getting psyched up. Oh, good one. These are all going to be super, super close. 120 for the Ghost. All right, Pops led the way with a 103 on the first round. Leading edge slats on Coyote Ugly. Oh, and just another super smooth technique. Sub 100 feet. We're going to call it 94, says the judges. That will give you uh, that will give you a little boost in your confidence. If we're seeing stuff this short on the experimental bush, I can't wait to see what we're going to get out of the light sport experimentals. Colin Keneva, the Carbon Cub, he's sticking to Mr. Conser consistent. 114. Within five feet of his first takeoff. All right, Brian Steck is bringing the American legend, mother of all Cubs, back in. Big, huge flaps on that airplane. Beautiful. The leading edge slats used it all to save it. Smoothly rolled it on. It cost him a little bit of distance. And as uh, our Delta Connection jet taxis in, those pilots sitting over there going, why am I at work flying this airliner instead of just being over there with all the great folks watching this fun stole competition? CC with another good one there coming in. Oh, what are we going to call it? I'd say just over the 130 mark. 138. Yeah, the, the, the Delta jet, he was a little bit long. He floated it to about the 1,500 foot mark and then uh, rolled it out to about 5,000 feet. So he may win his category, but I could beat him with my 737. Oh, yes, just enough power to keep it inches above the ground. So he got himself a score, but it definitely floated. All right, Pops out there crabbing into the wind. About 20-degree crab on final. You can see what the wind's doing. There's a lot of it. And then it starts to go away right in the last two, 300 feet right there. Now he's making a big adjustment, fighting it. Rudder, aileron, power. 
Not a lot of aileron at this slow speed high away. You don't want that induced drag, and he touches down short. The moan of the crowd back here. It's like, oh, my gosh. I haven't heard that big a moan since Grandpa found out Grandma was cooking meatloaf again. All right. Colin, you're on the board, buddy. Let's see if you can bring it in again. Two hundred for Corey. Oh, a big burst. Keep it in. Good correction. Waited till the airplane got a little bit lower to the ground because it floated pretty high. He took those flaps off to convince it to get all the way down to the ground. We're keeping Austin running over there. He's been flying all day, and now he's working as a line judge. And Austin calls that landing in at 255. Colin will not be happy with that. That'd be good with the old green plane, his beautiful family 182. Be sure to check him out at Carbon TV, or you can find him online. A lot of our performers here uh, have YouTube channels as well. Of course, Corey Robin, well-known. Pops Dory, he put up a lot of YouTube stuff back before it was even cool. You can go to Jughead Council and follow me and my dog Dakota as we uh, have adventures at R-170, flying, biking, skiing, hunting around the uh, western United States. Of course, CC and Bush Air, he's got some neat instructional videos out there, and you can head on down to Cal Navarra, Nevada, and get some great training. Okay, we've only got one heat of the alternate bush, so these guys are on it right now. This is for the scores, for the win. All right. So right now, I don't have uh, the scores in front of me, but I would suspect that Pops Dory might be leading this right now. And I don't know. Colin or CC could be pretty close for second in there. Second and third. Oh, there's a nice lift off with the Moac. Score of 141. Okay. Yeah, right now, C.C. Pocock's leading this round at 255. Colin Caneva's in third at 300. And Corey Robin at 320. Another one of those four-play Cessnas that uh, will haul the mail. Really going good there. Our We Make Paint Fly banner almost went flying over there in the uh, prop wash with Corey. Oh, that's a good one. That is a good one. One hundred and twelve feet for Mr. Robin. Right now, Brian Steck sitting in fourth place at 369. So what we need is we need Pops to put one down. We need a good landing. He scratched the first two. That is not typical for Pops. Nice and conservative on the takeoff. That tailwheel still had 
six, eight inches of travel before it got to the ground. That's a lot of AOA that he still had available, but the airplane lifted off. So we, he left a little on the ground, but it was a 95-foot takeoff. That was still his best takeoff, and it could have been even better. Oh, my gosh. All right, Colin, come on, buddy. Let's even improve on what you got. Let's beat that 300. Nice takeoff, sub 100 feet. I think this wind is shifting. It is getting in their favor. 87, are you kidding? Woohoo! I remember 87. That was like after the year after I graduated. All right, Brian, put that mother of all Cubs down. Floated it long. He's not going to like that. Wind giving him a little push. Working extra hard to keep it going straight there. He does, but it rolls out. Doesn't even bring it to a complete stop. That's too bad. But we sure appreciate him bringing out that mother of all Cubs. And, and we appreciate Legend Aircraft supporting the National Stoll Series. Not only here at Sodbusters, but at Swamp Stoll Jennings, Louisiana. Down in Gainesville, Texas. Up here in Brainerd, Minnesota. All the great events. Lakeland, Florida. Okay, CC. Come on. Come on. Come on. Keep it flying. Load it. Oh, he does. That was good. This could be moving him up or defending, improving his first place lead. 120. Nice job, CC. I think we're going to see that, that lead of 255. I think we're going to see that number come down. Opening the gap. He does. He takes ten. It takes fifteen feet off it, down to a two forty combined total for first place for CC Pocock. The ghost floats it. Oh, floats it seventy feet long almost. Sliding on those last of fifty ones to a stop. Right in the two hundred foot range again. Not what Corey was looking for. Did not improve upon what right now is a third place standing for him. Well, that might be. He might improve. If that takeoff was short, he had a 199 landing. So if he had less than 120-foot takeoff going out of here, Tori, he, uh, he might improve his score. Okay, Pops, you need one past the line. Get it all the way past the line, buddy. Come on, right there. Yes, yes. Now, standing on those heel brakes ever so light, feather it into the wind. There you go. There you go, Pops, showing them how the old timers do it. 118. Colin's going to bring it in low this time. Take some of those higher gusts out of the factor, goes to idle. Dumps it. Yes, it's on it. Get the brakes. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. All those brakes are fading just a bit. Where'd he get it? He kept the judges running. It's marked. Where's it going to be? 167. We may see some movement on the leaderboard here. Yes, that was good by three feet. Well, well done. Yeah, that's it. Put your hands together. Nice job there. Woo, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like at the top of the leaderboard, Joe Pops Dory did it. He moved himself in with that third landing, just what he needed. At 213 feet, CC taking uh, second place at 240, and Colin Keneva, the rookie, finding third place on the podium at 254. Congratulations. Coming up next, this here is a young Canadian gal that uh, you see the 6'9", a, a stole drag racer. This is Katie Wago. Little Piper Clipper she's flying. Now, this is, uh, this is an impressive little airplane. 
Only 150 horse, short wing Piper. Thing you'll notice, there's no propeller on, no propeller. Yeah, no propeller on this airplane. Uh, there's no flaps on this airplane. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, a little like homie, no 320, 150 horse, but Katie really knows how to fly this airplane, that and a whole bunch of others. Does some work as a crop duster up in Saskatchewan. Look at that. No flaps and still airborne before the end of the markers. And she's, she's not competing. She's just giving us a little bit of demonstration here between the uh, the divisions as we get ready to go with our next ones. It does have some VGs and, and uh, Horton Stoll on the wing. Roxeter, Ontario is her hometown down southern uh, Ontario. And this gal just kind of skips around the whole country from flying job to flying job. She's uh, she's dragged race. She's done stole drag racing in a Pitts S1. I was there for that. That was rather entertaining to see. And uh, has a competitor that she competes against, Kathy. That uh, good friend Kathy of hers flies a clipper as well. And these two will be neck and neck. Flying in the back country, flying at stole events. Nice thing is we you know everybody here kind of knows everybody, and and uh, we knew that that Katie was down in the Ohio area this week. And we're like, you got to get to Brainerd, you got to get to Brainerd. She's like, I don't think work's gonna let me, but last night about seven o'clock she showed up, so that was fun for everybody to see. Now she's really gonna have to work this. You're gonna see the nose is really high up in the air. She's got to increase a lot of AOA, a lot faster approach speed with no flaps and just being a little short wing. Clipper, but look at that. She rolls it right on the line. Good grief. Everybody's flying better than me today. This is embarrassing. You didn't have to agree, Tori. Really? <laughs> of course, the bungee cord suspension and that clipper just kind of bouncing her along the little tires out there. And that, that's a fairly rough strip out there. Now, the prop blast has really worn it out today. But... Uh, you should see it from the air. It, it was all nice and pretty green when we showed up three, four days ago, and now it's just two big brown streaks where we've been taxiing and landing all the way. She had to take that thing over to the strip at uh, at Madden Resort. We really we had a wonderful time over at dinner the other day, and we really all kind of wanted to fly over there. Of course, it was going to get dark before we got back, so we, we drove, but... What a wonderful uh, opportunity over at Madden Resort, whether you're looking for a place to vacation, a little uh, second honeymoon with the missus or husband, or you want to go out and get your seaplane rating with Mary. Head on over to Maddens.com to find out about their wings over water at, and Maddens on Gold Lake. Going in there was just like... A, so many of the movies I've seen where the families all go up in the summer and spend time in the mountains and the lakes and the lodge was just like that. It was just a cool, cool place. One more run for Katie here as we wait for our light experimental and light sport categories to get going. They'll be running in two different brackets of three. Hope everybody's had a good chance to walk around, take a look at some of the great airplanes out there. Of course, so many of them are maintained with the McFarland parts, STCs, and their FAA PMA parts supply. Uh, great selection. Of course, those beautiful paint jobs out there. Nothing makes that paint look better than AirTech coatings. They make paint fly. Three forty-nine for the takeoff for Katie. That's actually not too bad. First one was five twenty-three, so she did a nice job of improving on her first pass. CC, nice work over there, buddy. Nice, yeah. That puts him in a little better mood. No, there's no there's no wind up there blowing. Look at the, the overshoot. Nice job of keeping the airplane nice and coordinated, just pulling it back around, getting lined up. Of course, she's trying to fly tight patterns to uh, limit her time, just as the only airplane out flying this exhibition. Going to slip it just a little bit, help get it slowed down, touch it down. Oh, a little bit long and fast, but that's all right. 
She's going to roll it and hold it. Nicely done. Well, coming up next, these are the boys and girls we have all been waiting for. Hal Stockman, Lawnmower 3, that specialized Rans S7. He's always, it seems like, chasing his buddy, Steve Henry, with Wild West Aircraft and Yeehaw 6. It's kind of like I'm always finishing behind Jeff Pohl. It seems like Hal's always finishing behind Steve Henry. But there's going to be a day that someone's going to beat Steve Henry because it happened this year. There's Miss Katie. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to start the light sport experimentals with Marlo Tooth with his Just Highlander and Joshua Broughton with his Legend 11. Russell, Minnesota and Rossal, Minnesota. So a couple local boys here as well enjoying the, uh, the great hospitality and flying up here. There comes Lawnmower 3. Now you may wonder why his airplane is called Lawnmower. And it's, well, the first one he ever built had that Rotex motor and he'd be flying around his neighborhood and the people all told him it sounded like a lawnmower. So as he built number two and three, he just kept with the name Lawnmower on it. It just makes sense. Well, there's two different theories of competition here. So Hal Stockman goes with the theory that I'm going to build the lightest airplane possible and use a, a lower horsepower engine. Steve Henry and Jason Boussat have said, well, I'm going to go with a fairly light airplane, but I'm going to go with a whole lot of horsepower. When I say a whole lot, I mean over 300 horsepower. That's on an airplane that was designed to operate with 100 horsepower Rotax. Here goes Marlo getting that Highlander airborne up around 220 feet today. A good start for him. He's one of our newer Stoll competitors out here. Now, I love this airplane that Josh Broughton has, the Legend Aircraft Model 11. Look at this. No flaps. Nice and light. Rotate it, and it'll just fly right off. Just beautiful. Nice improvement over the basic Piper J3. There's a great look at, uh, at Lawnmower 3. If you notice, he does not have a tailwheel. He goes back old school and goes straight to the skids. The pilots are always looking to reduce their weight. And you see that lightweight capability of Hal right there getting airborne in about 73 feet. So, all right, that looks good. Well, here we go. Everybody's getting excited for this one. Plug your ears, ladies and gentlemen, because we are about to tune up 300 horsepower of edge tune performance. This is a snow machine engine out of a Yamaha Phaser. Pull gone. 35 is about what I'm going to predict on that. Come on. That is why he is the world record and current champion. 46 feet. I gave him more credit than he deserves, but woo. But here's the man that's been aiming for him, Jason Bousset, down from Alberta, Canada. He also is now running an edge-tuned motor. Same Yamaha motor on his Rans S6 Coyote 2 that is very, very highly modified. Oh, ho, ho, buddy! Wow. That was incredible. Colin, welcome! Thank you, brother. Thank you. 45 feet for Jason Bousset, and I think you were taking home your very first uh, your first placing in a stool contest, aren't you? Oh, man, how fun is that? How fun is this crowd? Oh, it is great. And there we go. Nice job, Marlo, bringing the Highlander back in. He's done a good job all week of improving his skills and making that uh, an even better performance. I don't know if the line, jo line guys can hear this or not, but I'm really sorry about took three of three or four of you out, but uh, I just wanted to see if you're awake. Yeah, we've kept the line judges running all day here. It has definitely been uh, been tough. Oh, those guys are running. So, 
you know it's bad when they get their one wheels and soup them up when I start flying because they got to cover more ground faster. Jughead, you're an aviation oh, legend. Nice oh, nice recovery. Nice. nice recovery. You're an aviation Perfect. legend, brother. Perfect addition of power to float that across the line. No flaps. That's impressive. That is good. I mean, that's a similar to really kind of what the clipper is. A little longer wing, but uh, great flying right there on his behalf. Okay. Hal Stockman. He's he tired of finishing second and third. He has been waiting for the day that he gets to knock these guys off. The wind could be in his favor to do it today. Did Hal tell you the story of why he names his planes lawnmower? He did. Yeah, we shared that with the crowd already. Wow. I don't feel so bad anymore. I don't feel so bad anymore. But that's, you know, he's wound up. He's he's putting it all on the line here. Woo. Good decision. Take that one around. Yeah, I don't know if everybody can see through the open door as well as we could, but he was stirring the stick pretty mad on that. Look at that. <laughs> Steve Henry working it as well. Steve Henry flies in wind all the time. So does Hal. It's always windy out in Nevada where he lives. So if anybody can handle the wind, it's these two, and they're still working hard at it. Steve gets one down. Look at the tape. Tire completely locked up. Probably not what he wants, but at least it, it's a counter. 109. 109. You'll notice even the line judges over there now are starting to wear some dust goggles and stuff. They are definitely taking a beating today. Yeah. Yeah, I just heard somebody explain over my ear here. It sounds like when Jason Boussat gets to hang it on the prop with this Yamaha-powered Coyote, it sounds like a, a Star Wars TIE fighter. Boussat's flying kind of an emotional day, too, today, so... Oh! No! Oh! So close. Yeah, he's got some extra angel wings helping him today, but he needed, he needed one more flap on that one. Wow. Without that scratch, that would have been 71.5 feet. Ah. That's tough. All right, here's Hell on a second landing attempt back here. Oh, and that one still touched down short, but it touched down control. So. Boy, these guys are putting it all out there, aren't they, Jughead? Yeah, they definitely are. So how was it for you out there, Colin, your first stole competition? And... Uh, you flew a really nice airplane, actually found yourself on the podium. Well, I got to tell you, it was, you know me, I like, I, I could have fun at a doggone funeral. And so for me, it was all about having a blast, uh, seeing all the smiling faces. Uh, my friends over there, the, the line judges were cheering me on. It just, it's just a blast. Well, congratulations. Well flown. Well Thank flown. you, sir. You actually had second place up to the third round. Never give up. And Pops Dory pulled one off at the very end, bumped everybody down. So, beautiful Legend Cub. Oh, that's a, such a nice airplane. The Acme uh, shocks underneath on the tail. There's Yeehaw 6 Wild West aircraft out of Napa, Idaho. Jason Boussat running that wingtip right in front of the boys and girls, giving that camera a good view. Come on, buddy. Come on. And the lawnmower. Those uh, reflective stripes on, on Hal's flight suit is, that is Hal. He retired heavy engine mechanic in the mines. He's gone to work every day wearing those reflective stripes, and he still wears them every day when he is out flying. It just wouldn't be the same Hal without him. The most popular man on the Internet that is not on the Internet. And this man does not have a cell phone, does not have a computer. Marlowe is off with his Highlander in 267 feet.
That is just a beautiful airplane. There you go. Nice takeoff, too. Really well flown there by Josh. Rossell, Minnesota. Just hanging in the wind up there. So 214 got... foot on that takeoff. You know, this wind is kind of gusting to the side here. It makes it really tough. Well, if you'll notice when you look at every flag, every flag out here is blown a different direction. But it's it's Minnesota, so if you don't like the winds now, just give it about 10 minutes. Yeah. Steve Henry's going to try to line up and take some angles out on that wind. How short was he on his first one? 46-6 or 73? I think that was a... Uh... Oh, oh, yeah. That's a nice one. 43 and a half feet. That was his first. 3.5. Jason saw that. Jason saw that. And if you don't think these two are competitive, hang out at the campfire with them. They compete at everything. Jason won two weeks ago at New Holstein. First person ever to beat Steve Henry. He went for it. He did not get it. He did not get it. So two weeks ago, Jason Bussat beat Steve Henry. First one ever to do it at New Holstein. A week later, uh, Steve Henry reclaimed the title at Oshkosh. Oh, Marlo. Oh. That is not going to work well. All right. Okay, everybody just stay there. Everyone stay back. We've got our crash fire rescue crews. The pilot is moving. That's a good sign. He's running through his shutdown checklist right now. His master's off. He's getting his fuel selector off. He is climbing out. That is one of the reasons we wear our helmets while we're competing as well. He has climbed out and it looks like nothing is bruised more than his pride. He can always put a plane back together. Absolutely. Absolutely. He's up, he's, at, he's standing outside the airplane, he's talking to everybody. All right. We're going to take a quick commercial break and then we'll let you guys uh, know exactly what's going on here in just a minute. Well, we just got official word that the pilot A okay, one hundred percent. When it's time to recover and paint your fabric-covered aircraft, look no further than AirTech Coatings. Since 1982, our FAA-approved system provides you with a shiny, durable, easy-to-apply product. The AirTech system has fewer steps than any other product on the market today, saving you both time and money. While using cutting-edge technology, we offer a wide range of products, whether it's for work, play, antique or aerobatic we have you covered remember we make paint fly Do it, 
Yeah, I got that right turn, we're good. Let's uh, meet up at the compound group up. That's 10-4. Most pilots know the Aviat Husky is a modern, tandem seat bush plane capable of operating in and out of short and rough fields, but not so many know the history of this American made aircraft. Picturesque Afton, Wyoming has always been at the center of adventurous travel. Founded by Mormon settlers, Afton is located just off the Lander Trail, a cutoff of the Oregon Trail, and the first wagon road built by the U.S. government. A shortcut to the California gold fields, today Afton is home to Aviat Aircraft, manufacturers of the Husky, Pitts, and Eagle Sport and Utility Aircraft, who are the current generation of adventurers. But before we discuss the modern aircraft, let's go into the rich background and history of this amazing company. In the 1930s, the Call family, Afton ranchers and gas and oil distributors, built Polaris snow machines, the predecessor of what we know today as the snowmobile, for their friends and their own recreational use. In 1939, when Mr. Call learned to fly, he discovered that aircraft of the day had challenges with both the high altitude and rugged environment of the area. So he decided that he could build a purpose-built mountain flying machine. He began building the low-wing strut-braced A3, and he called his company Call Air. However, at the opposite end of the country, in Homestead, Florida, Curtis Pitts was producing the Pitts Special biplane. He was producing plans, kits, and components as well as actual turnkey aircraft. About that time Rockwell became interested in buying call air, Curtis Pitts had a similar set of unusual circumstances. Pitts's aerobatic airplanes were not type certified and his production facility was not FAA certified. Call air came up with a plan to solve the problem in both Afton and Homestead, a joint venture. The deal was structured so that Afton would take care of all the sales, manufacturing, and production of the Pitts Special, and Curtis would take care of the engineering and FAA issues from Homestead. The type certified Pitts series that began with the S1S were all Pitts's designs and were all produced in Afton. With the S2A in production and Pitts planes the most desired aerobatic planes in the world, Frank Christensen of Hollister, California wanted to buy the Pitts factory in Afton which was called Aerotech at the time, and was a division of Pitts Aviation Enterprises in Homestead. A deal could not be consummated. In coming up short in buying the factory, Christensen, who was very interested in sport aviation aerobatics, did the next best thing. He created the Eagle II biplane kit based on the Pitts S2A, combining well laid out plans and all needed parts and supplies, changing kit building forever. The S2A and Eagle were both successful and active in sport aerobatics. Pitts and Christensen were essentially competitors. When Pitts retired, his partner in Afton, Doyle Childs, bought his interest in the company. Childs then offered to sell the company to Christensen, who bought the interest in the early 1980s, and the name was changed to Christen Industries. Christensen consolidated production of the Pitts models and the Eagle in Afton, and created the S2B, an enhanced version of the S2A. As biplane sales began to slow, Christensen was interested in obtaining rights to the Piper Super Cub. With Piper wanting over $1 million, a deal fell flat, so in 1985 they decided to design their own bush plane from scratch and name it the Husky. He surveyed Piper Cub owners to learn what they did and didn't like about the airplane. Christensen and his design team then set out to create an enhanced, clean sheet airplane, improving on what was good and getting rid of what was bad in the Piper Cub's design. In 1986, they began the project. In 1987, the Husky was FAA certified. 
The Husky went into production in 1987. Napkin sketch to FA certification to commercial production took less than 18 months, a feat nearly impossible today. In 1991, when Christensen was ready to retire, the company was sold to an Englishman, Malcolm White, and it became Aviat Inc. In 1995, after seeing an ad in the New York Times, then commercial real estate developer Stu Horn purchased Aviat. The name was changed to Aviat Aircraft Incorporated. Resembling the Super Cub in appearance and dimension, the Husky nevertheless had significant changes. Fuselage structure, 180 horsepower Lycoming engine with constant speed prop, and modified airfoil with four position, semi-fowler single slotted flaps. The power, prop, airfoil, and general aerodynamic cleanup gave the Husky a 25 mile per hour higher cruise speed than the Cub, while retaining a slow stall speed of only 42 miles per hour. The original A1, with its 1800 pound gross weight, Spartan interior, non-existent heater, and one coat of enamel, has been continuously improved upon in the last 30 years of development. The need to increase the useful load was the beginning. In 1999, with the A1A going from 1800 to 1890 pounds gross weight. In 2000, the A1B, the gross weight went to 2000 pounds. 2005 saw an all new innovative wing design, introducing a 60% span flaps, as well as an aerodynamically balanced aileron design eliminating the spade. The new aerodynamically balanced aileron increased the aircraft's roll rate as well as low speed handling roll authority. 2007 saw the introduction of the A1C, further increasing gross weight to 2,200 pounds, a new larger door with outside locking door handle, veneer mixture and propeller controls, and LED landing and taxi lights. 2012 saw one of the greatest improvements to the Husky yet. Gross weight increased to 2,250 pounds in concert with a new shock dampened landing gear system, controlling rebound and increasing controllability. And bringing us current, the 2018 Husky, sporting the latest in Garmin glass avionics. An all new redundant cable trim tab system replacing the outgoing bungees decreasing stick forces, as well as trim workload. Extended landing gear, increasing propeller clearance, and offering much greater stability. We've also addressed both pilot and passenger seats. Starting in the rear, a quick release pin system allows the entire rear seat and seat frame to be removed, allowing over 35 cubic feet of storage space. And in the front, full fore and aft adjustability, accommodating a much wider range of pilot heights, as well as pilot seat back articulation, allowing for easier passenger entry and exit. Further refinements include an integrated throttle quadrant, allowing one-handed operation of throttle, mixture, and propeller. Aviat has been recognized for the relentless dedication of over 50 talented artisans for their innovation, craftsmanship, and superb quality of the most robust, safest, and best performing aircraft in the world. Husky means more. And to the over 6,000 Aviat aircraft owners, we here want to thank you for allowing us to be a part of your family's memories and experiences for all of these decades. Welcome to Swamp Stole in Jennings, Louisiana.
Pop as soon as his Alaska Bush wheels hit the turf. That was outstanding. Boom. Now, did you see the shots play out? I did. He see was the shots completely play out. out of it. Hey, Jeff Womack, ladies and gentlemen, he's got a GoPro on that thing. Sacrilege. He's got a GoPro on a two cylinder, 39 horsepower, 1934 Aeronauta C3. And here he goes, ladies and gentlemen. No tail wheel, just a tail skid. I guess I'm going to go pull the baby alligator. See you guys later. The pilots walked away safe. The fire department's done. The airport is done with the uh, airplane. So as soon as our last three performers get a little fuel added to the airplanes, they're going to be back up to finish the competition. You want to well, you want to know the life of a stole pilot? Well, Mountain Matt, he just took off. He's already loaded all his camping gear up, fueled up his airplane. He is already headed home for uh, to Colorado. It's been uh, three, four days here in town and uh, there goes john headed back for uh, minnesota as well in this 170 joe 100 so yeah a lot of times you get to compete spend all day out here in the wind sun heat compete and then it's load up and get headed for home good news is today they got a tailwind going home so so i see uh, hal's up there throwing a little more gas in the lawnmower steve henry and uh, jason probably doing the same thing and then we'll have this final part of the competition knocked out when they get done spend uh, we got about 30 minutes here great chance to go talk to the pilots and see more of the airplanes and then we will have the awards ceremony we would sure love to have everybody stick around for the awards ceremony and i know the the pilots do appreciate to still have a crowd and the fans out there all the pilots are back in the planes they are just waiting for the air boss to tell them to crank up so we are going to get the rest of this sod buster stool contest brought to you by husky aircraft completed in just a moment it is going to be tight it has been tight all year it's been tight since these guys started flying together and, and hal and steve are the best of friends flying uh flying in boise and, and nevada area together all the time Jason makes it down to the states for competition several times a year. Of course, COVID's made it tougher for him to get across the Canadian border. So this is his first contest or his first trip down uh, where he got three contests in. So here we go. Judges are walking back. Air boss is in place. Pops Dory's running. Run, Pops, run. Do a little dance in a jig. Here comes Hal at the lawnmower. So this is going to be a little bit different. What's going to happen? Remember, these guys were airborne when we had the mishap. 
So they're just going to take off. The takeoff doesn't count in the competition at all. They're going to come in and land. That landing will count. And then they will have one more complete round, obviously a takeoff and a landing to finish the competition. So we're halfway through this heat. All right, now, even though our pilot was completely uninjured, none of these guys want to see a friend have a bad day. Nobody wants to see an airplane get bent. So psychologically, mentally, this is a place that some of these guys have never been. Some of them uh, maybe haven't been there in a long time. So they kind of kind of block that out, Get their minds back in the right place. Run that I'm safe checklist literally for them. There's that beautiful legend cub. Check that thing out. Just purr and so sweet. Just hums. Oh, that would be a fun airplane on straight skis out here. He's going to turn right early because he kicks off the uh, runs this from the beginning. All right, Joshua Broughton, his legend cub. It's so funny, as much noise as the other three competitors make, and this airplane like just whispers into the air. Again, it doesn't count, but you know they're still going to give it their best. This takeoff is just to simply get airborne to restage themselves for the landing. There's some nice wind right there. That was helping. Uh... Now, sometimes Steve, if he has a strong headwind, he'll actually keep the tail down and take off in a three-point attitude. He doesn't have enough headwind to do that right now and, and make it a better takeoff, but let's see if he doesn't do it for just show. Nope. But he shows you what a two-point takeoff will do. And again, that is an Edge performance-tuned Yamaha Phaser snow machine engine for both Jason and Steve Henry here. Big set of Acme shocks underneath Jason's airplane on the main gear. All right, so now the competition is officially back on. This is landing number two out of the three circuits. Final has Josh Broughton and his legend, Cub, out of Rossal, Minnesota on final. Big crosswind crab right there. There's the transition where it gets tough and crazy. Yeah, that wind really did pick up again. Yeah, look at this. I mean, that airplane floated 300 feet, and he just went, you know what? We're just going to take it. Yeah. <laughs> We're just going to take it. He's well, flying if, for fun. If you don't think that that plane sitting over there isn't on the minds of everybody in these airplanes. I mean, we're getting wind over the microphones right now. The windsock is standing out. We have not had this strong a wind all day. Now it's actually a little more, I don't know, 50 degree crosswind component here. So this is gonna help them shorten it up. Hopefully it'll take some of the turbulence out. Hal looks like that was a oh. lot smoother final with a good touchdown. Beautiful job, Hal, beautiful job. This might, this might get him back on. One hundred and one feet. 
on that landing. All right, Steve Hendry, yeehaw. Here goes Steve, just hanging that on the prop. He's hanging the whole plane on oh, the prop. Oh, there's the wind. Look at, look at how much stick movement he had to oh. make to keep that airplane airborne and then get it touched down. Eighty-nine feet there, Colin. Wow. I think that's just about twice as long as my first car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would, that takeoff will fit inside your barn at home. All right, Jason, come on, buddy. Don't get, don't give Steve any ideas about that barn. He just hangs it there and floats. Look at him on that throttle. Oh, he locked her up. Nice job, Mr. Bousset. 82. 82 feet for him on that one. Woo. So shorter than Steve, but I think Steve had a shorter takeoff. That was a long takeoff for Jason. Uh, he pulled it back, and it just didn't completely unstick right away. I think it is definitely coming down to uh, to the finals. All right. Oh, yeah. Woo. All right. We are, there is less than 50 feet separating first, second, and third place right now. Our winner right now is at 133 feet combined. Second place, 156. Third place, 188. I'm not going to tell you who has those scores. We're going to wait until all the way to the end. You know what's cool about Jason's plane is everything's uh, clear plexiglass, so you can see his feet moving, you can see his hands moving, you can see, you can. I think I could even see his brain moving. It's almost like an ugly Wonder Woman. <laughs> I didn't know there was such a thing. Oh, nice, nice Legend Cup takeoff there by Josh. All right, Hal. Just because it says lawnmower three doesn't mean you should uh, be looking for third place. Let's go get first or second. Come on, let's make some noise for Hal here. Let's get him up. Got Aaron over there playing the shooter. He steers it into the wind. He gets it airborne pretty quick. Jughead, I want you to take a guess at how fast he got that up. How short? Uh, 74 feet. <laughs> <laughs> and that, my friends, is why this is John Jughead Council. I guess I was right, huh? <laughs> uh, yes. I just looked at the guy standing over there pointing to the ground. Oh, well, that helps. Look at those line judges over there just partying. Oh, that might have been Steve's shortest yet. 44 feet. And that's, 44. Yeah, ironically, that's his plane's number. So I guess these guys are just posting on the side of their plane how far they're taking off. Guess I guess they should have put a 12 number on it. That was dumb of him. I, I don't have a long enough tail to put my number on there. Here we go, Jason. Spool that turbo up. Oh. oh, it got off, and I don't think it touched again. Where are they going to give him credit for? There's no way he's in front of the 50. He's on this side of the 50. So they're calling that one 65 feet. 65. Now, I don't know if those line judges over there have already been into Grandpa's cough syrup. 
<laughs> well, it that was one when I saw it happen live. It was like that would have been tough to call as Joshua beautifully floats that Legend Cub down for his final landing. Again, just flying for fun, showing the great capabilities of the Legend Cub because while it's a light sport aircraft, he knows he's not going to compete. You know, it's pretty bad when you're you're the long lander at 250, 300 feet. Yeah. But but that last takeoff at Jason's, it was one of those ones that was really tough to tell. Was that tire off the ground or not? If you don't think they're working, the colonel's out there tightening his belt. He's already got about two miles under his belt running up and down that thing. All right, Hal, here we go. 74-foot takeoff. Let's match it for 158 feet total. There it is. Drops oh, that power. went long. If we strung a wire across here, he could hook it. He could. One forty-seven there. Uh, that I don't think is going to move him up. Steve Henry's going to come in low, try to avoid those winds. It affected him at the line last time. It floats up. Power. Oh, look at him dump the flaps airborne onto the brakes. Is it going to be enough? Delta's like, I'm out of here. These guys are too good for me. 114 for Steve Henry. That gives him for this round a combine of 158. Colin, this is tight. It is all down to Jason. He's going to bring it in long, low, and slow from the end. We saw him hang on that prop. But that's the way he flies, and he told me that, that last is. night. Yep. Those leading edge slats let him get that super high angle of attack. The side vision, the looking through the floor. It's all down to this. Come on, Jason. Just hang in there. Keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. Oh, oh, and he scratched. Otherwise, he would have had that. By an extra foot, he would have had that one. So close. And that was a. 70 foot landing he had the potential of going about 130 total right there oh wow. 150 dang but that's the name of the game it's a it's a it's a precision sport and it comes down to well inches. it looks like in the light experimental category it looks like steve henry is going to defend the title with a total combined score of 130 i don't know we gotta go to the tape on that one I'm not going to call this yet. The tape on that was so close. I'm going to go to the production booth, see if we got a final score. All right. First place goes to Steve Hendry, Yeehaw 6, 133. Jason Busat's going to take second prize home to Alberta at 156. And Steve. Rev it up, Steve. Rev it up. Al Stockman at 188. Ah. Oh. oh, what a great time. What a great time. Well, Colin, you know, we couldn't think Aviat Aircraft, Air Tech Coatings, American Legend Aircraft, Lad Gardner Aviation, Acme Aero, Madden Resort, enough for uh, helping bring National Stole Sodbuster up to Brainerd. And, of course, i got to thank Sport Aircraft Seats for uh, helping make sure that I get out to all these events. And for anybody out there looking to upgrade the upholstery, the seat cushions in your airplane, I highly recommend you reach out to Sport Aircraft Seats. What a great day it has been here. I'm going to get whispered in the uh, the ear by the race director, and uh, you let the folks know about the 30 minutes from now we're going to have the awards banquet. Yeah, thanks, Jughead. <clears throat> and uh, my thanks to Jughead, too, for uh, shoving a microphone in my face. It wasn't something I was expecting, but I'm glad I got to hang out and be his wingman. Well, uh, we, we sure appreciate it. You, you entertain us in the air with the old green plane. And talk about in the air entertaining. Hey, if Austin Clemens, yeah, you, the punk kid, punk kid with a uh, with a husky, if you're around, Doug Jackson, I think, is looking for you at Show Center, please. Austin Clemens. Woo. Austin Show Center. 
And for those of you picking up to leave, why don't you hang out just for a few more minutes? Uh, we're going to do our, our awards ceremony here soon. But a great chance to go out, meander through the airplanes, talk to more of the pilots. Uh, my name is John Jughead, Council. Special thanks to my buddy Colin Keneva and everybody on the Internet for coming out and joining us with this. It has been a blast here at Sod Buster Stoll. Congratulations to all our new winners, and uh, congratulations to the, the veterans who are taking home some more hardware. I will uh, go home with my tail between my leg and see my dog. What a blast, bro. My name is John Jughead, Council. It's been my pleasure. We're out. God bless you. When it's time to recover and paint your fabric-covered aircraft, look no further than AirTech Coatings. Since 1982, our FAA-approved system provides you with a shiny, durable, easy-to-apply product. The AirTech system has fewer steps than any other product on the market today, saving you both time and money. While using cutting-edge technology, we offer a wide range of products, whether it's for work, play, antique or aerobatic we have you covered remember we make paint fly my name is mary alverson and i own wings over water seaplane training i operate out of madden's resort up here in brainerd minnesota and uh, we have two airplanes we have a, a cessna 172 on amphibs and a Super Cub on straight floats. The Super Cub is, is kept here on Madden's property, so in the morning, if you get your rating here in the morning after breakfast, you have breakfast and hop in the airplane and we go fly, you don't even leave the resort. Madden's is owned and operated by a seaplane family, and you will have the experience of a lifetime here. If you're from out of town or out of state, this is the perfect place to get your seaplane rating. You're staying at the finest resort in Minnesota, and that in itself is a, a, an experience. And then you get your seaplane right on top of that. What could be better? Yeah, I got that right turn, we're good. Uh, meet up at the compound group up. At 10-4. Good little driver, straight on through.
Judges are kind.